morning from the last day of Paris Couture. Um, I'm speeding away from the Maison Magella by John Galliano um, artisanal uh, collection. Uh, always incredibly exciting because it is arguably one of the most spectacular shows on the schedule. Um, it kind of goes completely a away with the typical tropes of couture, um, as is Margiela and is Galliano, I suppose. Um, and so very exciting. Uh, we were told that it was a standing show, which is always um, cause for excitement. The show is always um, at Margiela's space. <clears throat> They're kind of offices and um, where they create all the clothes and it's a very tight space so there's very limited um, seating but in this case it's standing and um, we walk upstairs and there's m beautiful mirrored floors and um, which is a bit awkward in a dress I must admit and um, beautiful mirrored floors and we stand around them and projected on the walls are the artist Katarina Jeb's beautiful photographs of kind of nudes um, and they slightly they slightly jar as with the shape of the wall so you might have a nipple above an arm or a or the curve of a thigh um, somewhere near a head, but um, it was really beautiful and actually incredibly calming, which is a real contrast to the previous um, Margiela Artisanal collection because last season we saw a kind of cacophony of pinks and cobalt blues and poodles and excess and consumption and all about um, buying and consuming. And this time was very much about fetishizing that consumption to the point of to the point of going past it completely and um, you've, you've indulged so much in this complete um, over crazy fetishization um, of kind of digital um, consumption that we're going back we're desperate we're hankering for um, human instinct for something a little bit more natural and so once the models start walking horses start playing also on a projection and that projection is really key I'll get to that later horses start playing on the walls you can hear the sound the thudding sounds of horses feet and then what follows is a completely different um, move from last season if last season we saw again that kind of consumption and rich and print on print on print and that was definitely done here as well but in a very different style so last season was all about really sharp shoulders and tailoring was very key tailoring also key in this collection but had been really reappropriated in typical Galliano stylings um, to create something completely new um, so those horses are key they were they are a Galliano um, personal reference and um, he was doing equine therapy in Arizona um, and really kind trying to come back to that human instinct that I mentioned before um, and so he really became quite friendly and fond of a horse called or stallion even called blue um, and he was mentioning in the wonderful podcast that he does uh, and releases with the show that um, to be with a horse it needs to trust you you can't lie to a horse there needs to be a confidence and a mutual agreement with the horse and that kind of natural bond no lying no fabrications no additional ridiculous fanfare or digital you're really just bringing it back to these two creatures um, is kind of really what this collection was harking to so that wonderful um, equestrian element there were nods to but I would say it was a slightly more almost wartime equestrian feel um, it was much less um, atypical um, Sloan Ranger equestrian but much more slightly everyone had wonderful little um, berets on um, and which were of course painted and distressed in the white Margiela stylings um, let's talk about that tailoring a little bit because uh, as I said, the previous collection was really sharp lines, and this, these, the tailoring in this collection was much more um, almost zoot suit like, and by that I mean really boxy, really oversized, and um, really stretched to the maximum. Um, and that, thinking of the horse called Blue, Blue was really prevalent, and in this really kind of British way, lots of reds and blues on suits and on dresses, um, almost appearing as tartan. Um, but I'll talk about that later. So lots of zoot suits and perforated with holes as well, which to me slightly adds this um, protective, um, almost um, almost military aesthetic. Um, I'm not quite sure if that was intention intentional, but there are um, there are slight tropes in the notes that hint to um, kind of protecting and feeling like we're in a little bit of a society where you don't know where you stand and you're consuming all these lies, and so. Um, I do feel like there's a little bit, little bit of a protective wall element going on here. Um, the zoot suits have been slashed on one leg um, in typical degradé 
um, styling and this collection actually more than most that we've seen as of late was really in degradé Galliano style um, beautiful kind of cutaways and lots of contrast stitching in the dresses and it was really about showing the process um, so the suits were fantastic, lots of those um, thigh straps which you normally get to hold up socks um, but around the thighs on the men, everyone in fantastic heels, stomping great heels that were uh, calf length um, with a kind of augmented rounded toe um, and then the dresses which are really fantastic are reappropriated trousers and so they've got that idea of couture which is something that's really important to Galliano um, is having the idea of something, the essence of something, the line of something but not necessarily the actual physical entity um, so these were workwear um, trousers just kind of everyday Marjolaine trousers that have been opened and then reopened again so open to show the lining and that lining that wonderful gold um, lining then reopened again and so you have this fantastic floor length big swathing um, dresses there's about two or three maybe four one of which had that fantastic gold lining as a train and um, some of which had um, long linings with beautiful contrast stitching to really show the process of the making um, and then most of these were either belted with a wonderful structural bust um, but what really sung from these pieces and again in the suiting as well is that idea of projection so having that projection it's almost like a light print and so previous collection was lots of really heavy um, detailed prints which were beautiful but this was much more um, light and having someone you having that projection kind of capturing a moment having someone walk through that moment and immortalized um, and having that projection put on the clothes as if a print um, then made into a print and it kind of um, looking as if the models have something projected on them so it was a print but it was part carried onto the skin leaked onto the bodice underneath the dress um, in beautiful beautiful some of it was horses I couldn't quite make out but it was layered so well in what I assume is organza um, in some places it almost looked like tartan um, but it was carried up the skin of some of the models if you imagine beautiful um, bustier dress with some of the um, skin some of the projection kind of dappled on the skin and dappled on the face um, it was just brilliant that to me was a real step um, into modernity for the House of Margiela by Galliano. I just think that whole concept is so delicate, which is quite interesting for Galliano. And also the house tends to work with a lot of shears and organzas and kind of taking something like a Macintosh, which you're used to seeing in leathers or plastics and shearing it in organza. But I love that sheerness applied to these wonderful dresses and suits. And then with these wonderful layers of print, um, it was just really wonderful. Um, the tailoring was fantastic. The casting, as ever, is always brilliant at Margiela. Um And I love there was a slight um, cowboy nod as well, slight cowboy horse riding um, aesthetic, but ever so slightly. Um, some of the music as well started to hark to what felt like a um, real kind of wartime Britain, um, particularly with those blues and the reds um, and those slightly boxy zoot suits. I know zoot suits aren't actually British, but. Um, there was a real British feel here um, and I suppose that comes also with horse riding as well. Um, I'm, I honestly think this is one of one of the best Margiela shows. I feel like it was really um, really true to Galliano. I think there's a lot of um, kind of tropes and stylings that I picked up on that felt very um, kind of 2000s noughties Galliano and I really was excited by that. Um, also the silhouettes on some of the looks um, were just dragged and uh, really swathes of amazing um, fabric, some of which was so sheeny as they catch the light um, and then again on the mirrored floor as well was just brilliant um, this, the shape of them were kind of otherworldly so from the front it looked like a relatively normal silhouette and then from the back it's almost like a butterfly set of wings or two large um, kind of lumps or arguably a kind of saddle shape um, for the model so it's brilliant I, as I say I think this is a really really interesting step in the right direction from uh, Marjola Bagano not that they need to be stepping in any right direction they all, uh, the show is always fantastic and collection is always brilliant um, I'm really really excited to see some of the details up close because I think that's what makes these collections so perfect um, but yeah it was an absolutely fantastic show another amazing collection from Galliana at Margiela will I ever uh, do a review where I don't say that I wonder um, but yes congratulations Galliana congratulations Margiela another whip it amazing 
um, collection. I'll see you guys very soon. Last day for tour, so a few more um, reviews to come. Please do subscribe uh, so you don't miss a trick. And make sure to visit Show Studio so you can see all the amazing details um, I've described and see the collection in full. Um, I'll see you very soon.